My name is Shay Waffles Johns and I am driving Big Cookie today. Big Cookie is a Bristlebot shell spinner that uses only the momentum of the weapon to drive. It doesn't have any wheels, it doesn't have any external drive system, it's just the weapon. It uses actually one third of a Triton weapon system for a 16 pound shell. When I look at robot building, the problem I'm trying to solve is what can I do well and what do I want to avoid? And I want to avoid being compared to people like Jeff Waters, Jameson Go, or people who are really good at doing really smart stuff, but things that they expect to be able to control what their robot does and make decisions for the robot. For me, I'm very reactive. Even if I'm driving a wheeled robot, I don't know what the robot's gonna do necessarily because it's so unintuitive to me to be using a controller. So for this, I'm reacting to whatever the robot is doing and that's kind of how you have to do it. Anybody who tries to drive one of my robots is gonna have the same experience I do, which is confusion, <laughs> but chaos. I think that kind of unpredictability can really set people off guard and make a big difference in a fight. So I'm hoping that it can really cause some chaos and destruction because the capability is crazy. Nobody needs wheels, gotta get rid of them. Oh, I did think so. Part of the reason that I wanna keep Cookie close to a conventional 30 pound weight limit is I do intend to fight it in other 30 pound competitions. So at Norwalk, I get the added benefit of being able to like have a more rigid base plate. It has a heavier AR500 base plate. And we get the mini bot with this weight bonus that I think should make a really big difference. Thank you. Totally easy, totally fine. Bristle bots are easy, they said. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately now they're facing towards the wall, so the thing it's going to do is go straight into the wall. Yeah. That's a downer. Okay, so flip the switch. We're allowed to move it right now. Can we yeah, just try to move it? Right okay. Now. Okay. Okay. We're good. Stop. We're good. <laughs> you got this. Two. One. Fight. Robots fight. For those that might have missed it, Chromoly, the other white meat, written, um, intimidatingly on the side of Big Cookie. Big Cookie up to speed, a very slow moving robot, but uh, an incredibly intimidating full body I feel like you can move shell. fast at any moment. I just feel like it's gonna catch the floor or something and go flying. Yeah, that's an absolute possibility, almost a guarantee at this uh. point. Now, Death Pack is a competitor just kind of letting Big Cookie do its thing, uh, take on the mini bot. Fresh floors no longer. You know, we talk about strategy a lot behind the desk, and sometimes when you've got robots this new, the strategy is just put it in the ring and see what happens. Oh, there it is, leveled out. The gyroscopic forces on Big Cookie are really something. Looks like the minibot coming into play to bring Death Pact over to Oh! Cookie. Now that... That was effective. Yeah, that is a shockingly effective strategy. If your robot can't move, throw another robot in there and yeah. bring your opponent to you. And now we've got Death Pact uh, upside down on the side of the arena. I think we're going to have an unstick from the house robot. One Flo's going to do its best. This is a position that is not easy for a house robot to unstick. Uh, it's going to do. It's going to try. It's going to do the do. The bigger house robots are a, a bit bulkier, a little harder for those delicate unsticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, what are they ringing at at? Almost 300 pounds, Just right? about, yeah. Which is another reason you really don't want to have to resort to the young stick. I don't like getting hit with a 300-pound 300, 300 block of steel. No, it's one of my least favorite things. Like, you think a 30-pound cookie. Oh, that is a good hit. Destabilizing cookie big, big cookie, though. Up. Death Pack trying to get loose, but to no avail. It got its one unstick. That nice. is the end. 
Big Cookie off to a successful start. No wheels! <laughs> no, we don't want wheels. No one can have wheels. You start to oscillate like that. Yeah, once I slowed it down a little bit, it, it got more even. But look at what it does to the wall. Those gadgets. Okay, hands off. Ooh, that's juicy. Okay. Woo! Things are different now inside there. <laughs> I'm shaking. That, y'all's weapon sounds horrifying. Like when it was going, I was just like, <laughs> awesome. It's, that was amazing. Oh my gosh, I love the glitter. However, the robot still, oh, and the glitter. The glitter has been dispensed. I love the glitter. The microwave has been fully dispensed. Glitter, I just had to marvel at it. Cookie was the first robot type that I ever built. One of my friends, Robert Sten, helped me build like a little one pound sort of tombstone style robot. And in testing, I noticed that the weapon spinning alone before I even put wheels on it would move the robot around. I've got this little like, been using peanut butter jar lids <laughs> with little uh, like fingernail brushes on them to see if the concept would work. And I was like, I really want to do a bristle bot that's just a shell spinner that steers it, you know, it's all one thing, I just want one receiver, one ESC, one motor in the robot. It's because I was new to soldering and electronics and everything. Then I can do it because driving with wheels was such a struggle for me. Next in Cage 4, Big Cookie versus Kablooey Tango. Fight, robots fight. And away we go. Now the winner here is gonna qualify for November. You can see uh, we've got Shay here on the left. She is doing her best with this uh, bristle drive full body spinner, which no longer seems to be moving, unfortunately. That mini bot, though, putting in some work, Kyle. Absolutely. And then Kablooey Tango comes from Alex Kreese. Alex, you might recognize from Team Valkyrie on BattleBots, MIT student. It looks uh, like he's standing by there with teammate, uh, team captain, I should say, Lucy oh. That is a really bold wow. move. The winner is Kablooey Impressive. Tango. So Cookie is using basically one third of the Triton weapon system. What normally spins an 80 pound blade is now spinning a 16 pound shell. Once it gets going, it's all hit really. The vibration of the slightly off balanced weapon and the motor spinning is what provides the vibration to the bristles. So sort of like a hex bug, it will bristle around. The momentum of the weapon kind of torque steers it. So if I spin up a little bit faster, it will pull to the direction the weapon is spinning. When I slow down, the braking kind of pulls it to the other side to turn the other way. What I will say about this particular iteration of Cookie is that it was based around objects we already had. Alex Horn had the shell that existed modified it slightly with some new teeth, and we're using it. We have this right angle gearbox. So we're kind of pushing the limits of some components because the motor is a Castle Creations 28 at 1100 kV on an 8S battery. That's like almost 40K RPM theoretical going through a gearbox that's only rated for 3000 RPM. So they are literally cat brushes. When I first started designing Building Cookie three years ago, I found little 98 cent cat brushes in like a pet store aisle. And I was like, oh, these are great. They're really rigid. They're all uniform. I can get them in bulk. I just cut them down, bolt them to the robot, and they are like a 14 gram total drive system in a smaller robot. So they're all direction, going the same direction. And these ones, you know, to fit differently because you want as much coverage as you can on the outside because you don't want anything to get high centered here. Fortunately, with this much weight, they're springy enough that it should compress evenly. Some of them are a little bit taller than others just for in case the floor is uneven. There's 56 tapped holes in the base plate. The interesting thing about Cookie is because of the bristles, it doesn't have a lot of traction. If something isn't driving straight at it, Cookie, if it goes to it, is gonna kind of like not necessarily bite into it particularly. So it can kind of dance around things. You'll see that like Depth Charge did that too with Knock Off White. It kind of like scoots around it and then once it's at an angle, it gets a good like vertical bite into it or a diagonal bite. We have spun it up, it does work. So we're very excited to get some uh, really good data on this and then maybe come back with an improved version in the future. More chaos, more better. What a sentence. And of course, Eight, the return of my seven, favorite robot here today. Six, Spare parts. Five, Spare parts. Four, three, two, This is one. an exciting one. Fight, robots fight. Wow. 
And you know what? It hasn't flown off yet. It's I'm pretty impressed. It's yeah. delivering. Oh, and it threw a mini bot just brutally across the arena. I believe the, the team behind Spare Parts earlier said that this is the Anything Goes Rumble, and they are a thing, so they get to go in it. Yeah. Wow, this is quite the sight. Oh, yeah. is this the, the cookie? Uh, we do have Big Cookie sitting Big in the cookie. corner. Yeah, I think I Big Cookie Big was cookie. working for a few seconds of this match. I would love um, some cookies. Am I hungry? I keep working food into the conversation. You do, yeah. I mean, Shay this has some pattern. cookies upstairs. We could ask her to bring you some cookies. I will be visiting the cookie department. <laughs> So that means Shay Waffles Johns is done for the day with her cookie.